Can you believe it? We have a game this weekend. It is preseason game number one against the Carolina Panthers. And the team got a test run at FedEx Field over the weekend with training camp at the midway point. We discuss our top takeaways so far. And we get up close and personal with the commander's first round draft pick as Jahan Dotson gets mic'd up for practice. Plus, we sit down with quarterback Carson Wentz to get an update on how he is settling in during his first camp with the commanders. And while Terry McLaurin makes the impossible seem routine on the field, we may have found the one thing he has not perfected just yet. To Command Center, Julie Donaldson, Logan Paulson, Santana Moss, and guess what, guys? It is game week. Mm. Here we are, week three of training camp. Uh, not probably typical of what you would have a normal game week, but what is happening this week, Logan? Well, I think this is the week you're trying to, you're kind of pulling back a little bit. You're getting ready for that preseason game. They'll probably have one, maybe one and a half full, like kind of padded practice today. Just make sure those guys are ready to go for the game. Mm -hmm. And then you get a little, a little more installs. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. now you get the offense to implement. Okay, this is what we might we want to start the preseason um, season off with. And it's not so much of what you're going to see during regular season, but it's, it's a sprinkle here and there of what these guys to expect. And how much will we see of the starters? Well, we will find out on Saturday, <laughs> 1 o'clock with the Carolina Panthers. Now, over the weekend, we held an open practice at FedEx Field. Under the lights, fans got a glimpse of what to expect from the team on game days this season. Some players even stuck around after practice for over an hour and a half signing <laughs> autographs for all of those who had made it out. Now, it also marks the midway point of camp, providing head coach Ron Rivera a good measuring point for his team's progress so far. It's one of those things that, you know, we, we changed the tempo uh, several times this week as we went through practice. In certain periods, we had this live periods. And when we went live, we were expecting certain things, and we watched it on tape. And if it was good enough, hey, we let them know. If it wasn't good enough, we told them it wasn't acceptable. They, it's, it's trying to get them to understand that, you know, you always have to be able to practice at, at, at a peak level, and that's what we're looking for. I um, thought a lot of guys uh, did some really good things today, as I said, especially when we, did, we, we, we had a couple of those live periods going. So here we are basically at the halfway mark of training camp. Uh, coaches had time to kind of ramp things up a little bit. What would you guys say was the biggest takeaways from camp so far, Santana? I think one of the things that I've liked, you know, and I'm being a receiver, just seeing the way the secondary is communicating. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's big. I think one of the things that st stood out because I was harping on these guys not pressing last year that much and then just, you know, getting beat in critical situations, you see a difference. You can see some of the guys, especially uh, number 20, um, uh, Bobby, Bobby McCain, Bobby McCain he's, he's getting into a groove now and showing you some of the things that he did in his previous spot. And so I'm looking forward to seeing these guys go forward. But that's, that stood out, you know, more than anything else to me. Yeah, and I think just the, to me, uh, to be like on brand is the tight ends, man. They've done an outstanding job. The young tight ends have just been fantastic. And every time someone gets hurt, you think, oh, they're going to run into a depth issue, and the next guy just steps up and looks like an outstanding football player. So to have those three young guys playing so well, Sammy's still playing well, I think is a testament to the recruiting that they've done here, the you know the scouting department, and um, it's been great. So. Not biased at all, being Not a former tight end yourself. <laughs> but we know how important the tight end position is into the offense and what they want to do as well. Um, and a lot of the tight ends have been kind of converted into yes. that position yeah. as well. So I think to keep your eye on it, to see how they are adjusting uh, is important. And it's great to see that they are progressing so far so well. What about some areas in camp that you say, okay, you know what, like we still have time to fine tune here. Where would that be? I think for me, it's it's Carson Wentz's mm. mastery of this offense. You can tell like they're, you know, in OTAs, we talked about this, and he looked, Phenomenal. Yeah. Looked like one of the best I've ever seen. But obviously, that slow start to training camp, I had a nice practice on Saturday, but it's taken some time to kind of work through some of these different concepts in Scott Turner's offense. It's the first time he's been in a really, truly, yeah. really offense. So I think that that's really interesting to me, and I want to just see how that continues to progress. Still a lot of time yet. A lot of preseason games to get that done, so, um, but keep an eye on it. And, and I was going to say Carson Wentz as well, but one of the things that you can, you can probably – pinpoint or, or point out is the linebacker position. Mm. You know, we haven't really seen them play yet, but we know this is one of the areas that we need to give some attention to. So it's going to be key to see how these guys fly around. I think we can expect what we can against the guys. I mean, for the guys who's going to be out there, but you need the depth. Depth is going to be yep. key. So the guys behind those guys who are going to uh, play a big role, we got to see what they have. Depth and position flex, that's something that this team really stresses, making sure mm. that they have, as we've seen over the years, that at times you do have to go deeper into your roster than you would like. Getting that time with those players out there is important. This is the time to do just that. 
Anybody surprise you so far at camp? You know, I think a guy that surprised me recently is Kelvin Harmon. He just mm. is a guy that's been super consistent. I always forget to bring him up. And so here, yeah. Kelvin, I'm talking about you right now. This is exciting because you've done a great job. What about you, Tana? <sighs> I'm going to say his name again. Markin Michelle. There we go. Okay. Got it right this go. time. Yeah. Got it right this time. I mean, no, honestly, you know, you expect guys to have that mm -hmm. opportunity and to relish in it. And he's been doing just that. Spoke about him earlier, and then we got Coach on, and he spoke about yeah. him. And so when you keep getting spoke about, you might be climbing up that ladder that you have a spot. So When they forward. start learning your name over your number because they're like, who's <laughs> out there making flashes? You are making an impression, yeah. and that is what you have to do if you're one of those players on the bubble trying to make a case to be able to be here for the 53 or the practice squad to extend your football career. Now, another player making surprises, not surprisingly, would be first-round draft pick Jahan Dotson. The wideout has been turning heads with this impressive catches on the field while developing chemistry with his new teammates. Now we mic'd him up after practice to get a close look at the newest commander, wide receiver. Where's the mic? Is it in the back? Oh, it's right here. Hey, Mom. How you doing? Hey, it's one. You feel me? Jahan Dotson, Penn State. We repping We Are out here. We're going to have a good day, though. Feel me? I'm mic'd up, bro. I know. Oh, Y'all let my guys know. <laughs> A17. I'm mic'd up today, so. Yeah. Yo, stop saying that, bro. Don't call me that. I ain't telling none of the DBs. I hope they say something crazy. I'm, I'm going to let you have two catches today. Oh, you going to let me? Yeah. You ain't going to let me. I'm going to let you have two. Two. See. You don't want to turn me up. I'm the wrong person to turn up, you know what I'm saying? You got to pay the toll after two, though. <laughs> so I'm going to let you have two today, huh? All right. All right, bet. Bet. This is going to be the pregame music, right? Pregame music? Music. Oh, music. Because if we listen to Drake before the game, because... Oh, we listen to the game. We're right. Oh, all right. What? Wait! Country. Before the game? I know. We're going to hear from What's up, Fargo? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> real fast. Fight it off. Damn. Damn. <laughs> Damn, damn. Damn, my God. Come on. John, you went outside. I'll go outside. You want outside or inside, Will? Where do you want to go? Come on. Come on. Have you catch the next one? you catch the next one? Yeah. Say that. Out, 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 out. Out, out, out. Out, out, out. Did I play this for somebody Wait, in the middle? No, we're all in a circle. I think it's so. just like a catch and concentration drill. So you can toss it to anybody in the circle. And if you drop it, you step out the circle. Hey, we play play this. Do we do it in the spring? This one. I got it ready. I'm on punt return. No, punt. Punt, I seen you. Yeah, punt return. That's what. I seen you. Yeah. You're very shifty on it. Yeah. Y'all practices used to be crazy at O State? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's urban now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. thing called Bloody Tuesdays. Bloody Tuesdays? Full pads and receivers 
doing stomp drill, tackle drill. Oh, no. Nah. We start off practice, angle tackle. In front of the whole team, just hitting. 24 periods. It'd really be like 28 periods. Yeah, right. <laughs> Maybe holding a few periods. Holding the period. Yeah, like, dang, it's, it's, it's set on 20. Don't stand up again. Don't you wish you had a normal job right now working at All State or something? Oh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what dude you seen pull off some Gucci glasses, though? Huh? What dude you seen pull off some Gucci glasses? A lot of them. No. Besides, like, dudes with real money, you know? Like, I could do it. No, you couldn't. No, you couldn't. All right. No, you couldn't. One thing I couldn't pull off is that fucking haircut. I need a, I need a cut. Man. I haven't got a cut in like a month and a half. Is that supposed to be tapered on the side? Yeah, I'm, I haven't tapered in like probably two, three months. You about that dread? Nah, right, chill out, chill out, chill out. These natural curls, you know what I'm saying? You're not catching me though. You just big. I just know you faster than that. You looking? I see. You. I was. I, I was trying to find a little hole. Scared. What you mean? I'm trying to find a hole. You feel me? Hit that. Then I was gonna hit that. Or somebody's gonna hit you. I see you out my pr I'm out of there. I'm sliding. Y'all don't know. Y'all y'all just don't. Y'all go see real soon now. Y'all go see real soon. Remember that each and every weekday, we are bringing you all the training camp coverage you will ever need on our Command Center Command Camp stream, showing you all the action from the practice field and breaking down all the top storylines. You can watch it on the team's YouTube channel. And if you're out of practice, make sure to use the hashtag HTTC when posting about your experience. We'll feature it on the streams. Now coming up, quarterback Carson Wentz joins us to give us an update on the chemistry he's developing with his new weapons here in Washington. We'll be right back with more Command Center next. The Commanders traded for quarterback Carson Wentz this offseason, and he arrives the clear number one on a team looking for stability at that position. Wentz has been adjusting to life in Washington and learning his new offense. He dropped by the set of our training camp practice stream and joined Santana, London Fletcher, and myself to talk about all that and the weapons he has at his disposal this season. Carson, we've been waiting to have you come join us a couple days now into practice, a couple of times with the pads on. Um, not your first rodeo, though. No. Uh, first time here with Washington. No. What, how is this process for you, trying to learn a new offense, learn new guys, and as camp kind of like ramps up each day to get more familiar, to yeah. get that chemistry down? It's fun, honestly. I mean, it's a lot of work. It's 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 a grind, as you guys know. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's a lot of fun too. Coming together, you're, you're building a culture. You're building a, a kind of a family. You're building that bond, and the only way to do that is out on the field by going through the hot mornings together, by going through it together. Um, I think OTAs was big um, and kind of developing some of those relationships, but now this um, just kind of takes it to the next level. So it's been fun getting to know the guys, getting to know the playbook, uh, feel pretty good in a good place with it as well. Um, we're not going to be perfect out there, but that's why we're out here. You know, we're working on that chemistry, that timing, um, and it's been a fun process. Everybody wants you to be perfect, though, this yeah. early on. Like, you've been yeah. through enough camps to understand that yeah. it, it, is, it does take time. For sure. Where where are you in feeling that you're getting closer to that though? Yeah, I feel good about it. You know, I mean, I want it to be perfect yeah. too. You know, I'm kind of a perfectionist. Like you miss a throw or you, you miss a read or this or that, and you kind of kick yourself. But it's like, hey, it's still early. It's still early, and you, it's a process. So you can, you know, the mistakes that happen are, are often good because you can go in there and you can watch the mm -hmm. film together and talk about it and be like, hey, this is what I was expecting or this is what I was seeing. Um, and then you can fix it. You can fix it and learn from those mistakes, and that's that's normal. Uh, but at the same time, I want it to go well. I want it to be perfect, and so uh, I have high expectations every practice, and uh, so do the guys around here, which is really cool because we, we hold everybody accountable in, in, in those high expectations. Um, but yeah, it's not gonna be perfect yet, and, and we realize that. Being that you have a chance, you had a chance actually to, to have a moment like you're in right now, last year going to Indy, having to play and learn that system. Yeah. I'm not sure how much you had to learn because you had the coach, so that was familiar you know, territory with you, but you're, you're a veteran in this game. Yep. Do you ever feel there's going to be a, a time where you're more comfortable than, than other times, or are quarterbacks always kind of playing with their back against the wall and just saying, hey, I got to go out here and make the next down better than the last down? Yeah, that's a great question, and honestly, you try and not um, – 
be complacent, I guess. You're always trying to get better. You're always trying to learn and little nuances or um, just understand the concept of a play as best as you can versus every single coverage, you know. And uh, I think this year it's been uh, probably a bigger transition in learning a playbook for me, uh, different system, different style. Um, but the OTAs was huge for that. You know, the last couple of years, I haven't had an OTAs yeah. um, with COVID and everything going on. So coming in here um, in April and May and June, this was huge for me to to understand this playbook and then go through the summer and study it and then come in here feeling good about it, you know, and coming out here and, and executing it. And so uh, right now I feel like it's in a good place, but I'm always striving to get better and, and understand it even more. You mentioned, you know, having the OTAs this year, but also one thing that you did is you went out to California last month for a week with your skill guys. How big was that in, in terms of developing chemistry with those guys, not only on the field, yeah. but off the field? And it was also your first time being able to work with Terry McLaurin. Yeah, uh, it's a lot of fun. You know, I've done that for a while now uh, over the years in each place I've been. And it's one of my favorite things, honestly, because, I mean, the, the work is great. On the field work is great. And, you know, we're trying to learn each other. It's, it's fun. Everybody's working all summer. But it's the it's the chemistry off the field. It's it's understanding where everyone comes from. What's their background look like? What do we like to eat? You know, what do we like to do? Um, just getting to know them, get around them, um, was was really beneficial. And for me, it looks even more different this year now, being almost 30, and you know, it's a pretty young skill group. And so for me, I'm like the old guy out there, uh, which is a little bit new for me. But uh, it was a lot of fun um, just getting around them and doing something different uh, off the field. Here's a look at the numbers from Carson Wentz last season to Indianapolis. His 27-7 touchdown to interception ratio was tied for the second best in his career to date. The former second overall pick had a career high eight games with a passer rating of over 100. So back here with Longwood and Santana. I came early on. There's been plenty of times where we've seen him miss. There's been times where we've seen him connect. But as he said, it's not going to be perfect. And he puts that pressure on himself. But where is he in feeling like he's got this offense down if you think that's the main thing we really need to have from him? Well, I think Saturday's practice was a really good indicator of where he's at because he, he was starting to connect with guys. His rhythm in the red zone looked really good. Ron Rivera talked about it. He said that, you know, those are concepts that he's familiar with, and I think he did a great job. And I, I, as to see, to see him kind of developing that confidence is critical. And so I, I like that it's ascending as opposed to kind of descending over the last couple of days. And then you got to also um, understand that in practice, they're going to be throwing a lot of stuff at him. Sure. Yep. When it gets close to game time, we're going to now give him what he he's good at or what works. So, um, he might not look peaches and cream right now, you know. <laughs> might not be all, you know, nice and smooth. But when we get closer to the game, we start preparation, start putting in those installs, you'll start putting a game plan together that, that suits him well and that he can go out there and be productive with. And to elaborate on that, like, you don't install versus your defense. So yeah. you might be putting in cover three beaters on a day where your defense is putting in cover four. Mm -hmm. And as a result, you're not going to look as sharp. And so yeah. kind of navigating some of that stuff is also important. Well, head coach Ron Rivera says that he will, in fact, be out there Saturday against the Carolina Panthers. Just how much will we see him for? Well, until offensive coordinator Scott Turner and head coach Ron Rivera say we feel good about where we're progressing. Let's pull him out and give some of the other guys as we go deeper into the roster the opportunity to play. The Washington Commanders open the 2022 season at home against the Jacksonville Jaguars on Sunday, September 11th at 1 p.m. Tickets start at $46 while supplies last. Get your official Ticketmaster verified tickets at commanders.com slash tickets. Command the stands. Well, coming up, the skill players, they have been making plays on the field look easy at camp, but off the field, we found something that they could use a little help with. We have that story when we return. Welcome back to Command Center. The team announced that Mike Bass will be inducted into the team's Ring of Fame this season during the season opener against Jacksonville on September 11th. Over seven seasons in Washington, the standout cornerback started 104 consecutive games while recording 30 interceptions, the fourth most in team history. He is among the 70 greatest players in team history, and we cannot wait for this induction. Now, there are a lot of things that football players make look easy on the field, but that's because they put the work in at practice. During the offseason, Antonio Gibson, Terry McLaurin, and Curtis Samuel got a chance to take their talent off the field and in front of the camera for a TV commercial and quickly learn just how difficult it can be. For over 30 years. Go to Easton's.com and see how they grow. Very close years. 
Start back, start back here, just keep walking. Uh, it's more like a walk by. You gotta say, like, I was so awake, I got in tempo without I thought somebody was coming up here. <laughs> Not so easy, is it? <laughs> That's fun though. Tina, you used to do those commercials as yeah. well. Yeah, I mean they're fun and and it, it's all, you know, look, talking about fun, the car that you get. Yeah, that's the fun thing. That's okay, the that fun makes part. Sense. Yeah, that that's the fun sense. part. So the car makes all the bloopers and, and being embarrassed me, by the I go up there and mess it. up yeah. a couple of words for a $100,000 car any day. Ooh, is okay. that what kind of car you were getting? I mean, that's, a, that's what I was Dang, getting. bro. <laughs> not a problem. Well, yeah. you know what? Uh, we have a few bloopers ourselves here as television. It's not as easy as it seems. But um, no, we're, we're not giving you a car for this one. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Logan, you, you've been new and you've really kind of grown and embraced this. Oh. I mean, you're, you're a rock star. Uh, I don't How has it been for you adjusting? It's tough man i mean it, this is a lot of fun get to talk yeah. football get to hang out with Santana Moss. You, you know hang out with julie is awesome but i think the thing is like when the camera comes on sometimes your brain and your mouth don't work the way you want it to yeah. so you end up saying just crazy stuff and uh you know i'm getting better <laughs> not doing that tan it's old hat for you though yeah i mean it's look i'm one of those guys i like to be behind the camera or, or out of the what camera what are you talking about you're like yeah. you're on the camera right now yeah, and we got a bunch of fans out here still waiting to hear all this, yeah exactly but I, it's, it's not fun it's not fun when it comes to some of that stuff but yeah. When it comes to talking football, that's yeah, the fun part. Okay, I was about to say, I'm about to be offended here. <laughs> that would be a blooper right there. Hey, guys, that's going to do it for this command center. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next time, each and every day from camp.